Okay, so this match is between Fancy Beer and Black Sun. Fancy Beer <laughs> up till now has been a casual team from North America. They are, I believe, a combination of the Fancy Men and the Beer Warriors. The Beer Warriors are the ones who host the Wobbly Wednesday casual event. Exactly Greatest what event it sounds ever. like. Lots of people getting together and drinking and having fun. Black Sun, on and... the other hand, is an Italian Merc Corps, and they have played in MRBC, and they're actively competitive, and they'll be showing us some things from the European meta. And my apologies for interrupting, and my apologies for ruining that name. Fancy beer, beer, beer. I won't get it wrong again. <laughs> They'll try. Okay, just one second here. Okay, right, so Fancy Beer has started on the upper side. They are the red team on your screen. Black Sun is the blue, starting on the lower. From Fancy Beer, we have... Two Shadowhawks, two Cataphracts, two Ravens, two Jenners, Victors, and two Stalkers. So lots of pairs, all very good mechs. And it looks like they're going for a fairly mid-range loadout. Yep. This is, this oh, is I apologize. There's... That's... What were you going to say? I don't apologize. I was actually correct. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused by the uh, tool here. <laughs> so, Fancy Beer is one of those teams that they've the they haven't necessarily all played together a lot, but they have all played the game a lot, and so they're going to be able to work together fairly well. Uh, they know the meta, they know the builds, they know what they're doing. So, I think this should be a pretty good game. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I don't know what to expect out of our other team here, but I'm hoping that this is another close match like the ones we've been having. So, right now we see some lights moving out, uh, scouting the water, and just making sure uh, lots of people have been being careful, they don't want to get rushed if they can avoid it, so just seeing some general movements and scouting right now. Looks like we have... Oh, what were you saying? I was just going to say that both teams are playing fairly passive right now. The Black Suns have also brought a similar... Sorry, actually, that one I reported in the first place was Black Suns. The Fancy Men have brought uh, Embers, Blackjacks, Shadowhawks, Banshees, one Battlemaster, one Dragon Slayer, and a Raven 3L as well, and a Yagmek. So the Black Suns have actually gone slightly more meta. The Fancy Beer team has brought what look to be some pretty decent loadouts, but there is a bit more diversity in what they brought. Yep, so Fancy Beer has spawned However, right now, both side. teams are playing it pretty safe, just near their spawns. Uh, Fancy, Fancy Beer is just holding the upper hills. They haven't really sent anything up to the comms tower. And on the other side, Black Suns is holding their base. If this goes to a long game right now, the Black Suns Ravens are getting some work in. So they are getting a bit of poke. Not a lot of major damage right now, because it's out at about... 9, 900 meters, 1,000 meters, and those ER large lasers are only doing about 20% damage. But it is consistent damage going out. Yep, and that's uh, another one of those things that we keep seeing very frequently is that teams that can put consistent, not even necessarily consistent damage, but consistent harassment on their opponent are going to have a slight advantage in the fact that your opponent uh, not only is going to be weaker on armor, and possibly you could lose mechs to those pokes and that harassment, but they're going to feel that pressure. They're going to want to try and move out from a situation where they are getting poked by those large lasers into a place where they feel more in control. There have been a few Ardian airstrikes exchanged from each side. Nothing major, a few mechs down to about 90%. The Icarus in the Jager mech for Fancy Beer, 90%. Uh, the Victor for Fancy Beer has also been poked down to 92% just by the Ravens. But overall, this range ah. has been kept very high. Yep, and we see uh, Fancy Beer is taking a little bit of a position up by the radio tower. They still haven't fully committed to that, but uh, it looks as though 
they're n they don't want to fall into the trap that some other teams have fallen into, where if you dedicate all of your forces up there, uh, up by the radio tower, you can get pushed in on fairly easily. Easily, but this is looking to be a fairly long distance engagement so far. Black Suns hasn't even uh, left their initial spawn area. They've moved up slightly, but not much. We see the Ravens are continuing so, their poking. Oh, go ahead. I'm just having a look, a little bit more of a detailed look through loadouts from Black Suns, and they've actually brought a dual Gauss quad medium laser cataphract, and judging by its speed, that's probably XL. So that's going to be quite a potent sniper if you can get angles. Those Gauss rifles are going to outrange pretty much most any other weapon on the battlefield. The trade-off being that in order to fit those massive weapons, it's going to uh, take an XL engine. And with an XL engine, if you lose any of your torsos, left, center, or right, you are dead. Compare that to a standard engine, which although it is heavier, as long as you've got your CT, you're still alive. So if it comes down to a brawl, that XL can be quite punishing. And we, saw a we also see on another of their cataphracts a dual gauss and an ER PPC. So that is, again, a very long range loadout. And I feel like if they get a bit more aggressive with these fracks and they can bring them into play, um, then they'll start getting poke done and winning. Now, speaking of poke, we do actually see that Lex 420 on Fancy Beer in a Dragon Slayer is down 68%. So if he takes a few more hits from either artillery or. Uh, just direct fire from these Gauss snipers, then he is going to be in quite a bit of danger of going down and putting his team down a kill and force, forcing them to make a move. That's one of the things that you have to be very careful about in skirmish is that it, it can be a very passive game mode, but you have to make sure that you don't lose a mech. And 68%, while it doesn't sound like it's a huge loss, it could be... Uh, on specific components, like we see Lex is actually down in his head. So while the head is a very hard component to hit, if he goes down due to that headshot, means that his team is suddenly at a huge disadvantage because now they have to push in a man down into their opponent to take the win. They can't just sit back and let the time run and hope for picks. But he's doing the smart thing. He knows he's damaged. He knows that he's at risk and he's fallen back to the very rear of the formation so that it's going to be unlikely that he gets picked off. However, he is still peeking, and the reason he's doing this is because he has two ER PPCs and a Gauss, and he represents quite a bit of his team's long-range firepower. Uh, it's risky, because if he gets another strike dropped on him with how weak his head is right now, then that already stands a decent chance of splashing his head and killing him. That already is an insanely powerful tool, uh, especially in passive matches like this, where both teams are just trying to sit at, uh, sitting around trying to get the advantage on their opponent. If you can get uh, a good arty on a couple of clustered mechs, not only is it going to shift them out of whatever cover they're in, but if they stay there, it has the chance of severely damaging uh, armor and interior components, or even getting a kill if you're lucky enough to get a headshot. So at the moment, it appears that Fancy Beer's goal is simply to counter-snipe that raven that has been pecking them. Like we've been saying, if one mech goes down, it forces the rest of your team into a bad position, and that raven is going to be the easiest thing for them to score a kill on. If he gets too cocky, gets too close, and he gets nailed by these extra long-range snipers, well, he's a light mech, and he doesn't exactly have a lot of armor. To his benefit, he does have a lot of speed, so if he can utilize that and not stay too stationary, he is a pretty damn difficult target, even especially because he has ECM, so you can actually get a target lock on him until you close under 200 meters. We see Damien Sabre, uh, one of the light pilots for Fancy Beers, just keeping an eye on the tunnel. Both of these teams are being very careful. They don't want to be surprised. They want this to be uh, an even fight where they know exactly what's going on. So they're covering all of their bases. It looks like Black Suns is still holding in the back of their spawn, doing the same thing. They've got a couple Dragon Slayers out in the water, uh, hiding behind that big rock formation, trying to get some picks. But they also have forward place Jenners watching Arch, making sure that there's no form of cave rush or shenanigans coming from uh, Fancy Beer. One thing to note is that although the strikes have been constant, they haven't been 
back to back so that the teams are trying to position them and get best use out of them because at most you can have two per player if you dedicate the module slots to it and over a 20 minute game like this there is going to be you are going to be running out if you just use them willy-nilly and it's also important because if you do get into that push scenario where either you are being pushed on or you are pushing and if it's late in the game i like some teams like to play a very passive like this and then try and rush within those last two minutes trying to catch their opponent off off guard or get an advantage in that way having Aaron already left at that late stage of the game is a huge advantage because people don't usually hang on to it that long so if you can be patient and you can make sure you're only dropping your RD on good shots you can have a, a very large advantage in the end game if, if there's a push scenario looks like uh, so with about 10 minutes left in the match what sort of options do we have going forward Raffel? for these two teams. So Fancy Beer, I would say, has the tactical advantage of the map. They can see slightly better where their opponent is and are in turn uh, more covered from being seen. They could go for uh, sort of the cave push scenario. They try and send mechs through the cave to get a jump on any mechs that uh, Black Sun has left out. However, you then of course run the possibility that those two Jenners watching cave both have air already, and when you pile out, you get struck and they're 800 damage air already, and you're just done. So it really comes down to how aggressive these teams want to play it obviously right now they're both both really hoping for picks uh they're both really wanting that one kill so that they can sit back and be the person with the better position that it has to be moved in upon uh i would i feel like if somebody's going to make a push it's going to be fancy beer i feel like black suns is going to try and play it very very patiently uh they might be willing to take it to a tie and replay it but I honestly don't know. I feel like with the, the mech loadouts we see from Fancy Beer, they... I, see, they've got an interesting mix because they have, you know, that ERPPC gauze mech, like you said, but they also have uh, closer mid-range weapons. Or No, I'm looking at the wrong mechs, aren't I? Who brought well, the, from what uh, I can tell, both sides do have a mix of snipers and brawlers, both mid-range snipers, extreme-range snipers, and close-up brawlers. On the Black Suns team, the brawlers are represented by those two miseries. From what I can see, they're loaded out with three large lasers and an AC-20, and they've got the other snipers and the cataphracts and the victors to back them up at long and mid-range. Uh, However, on the, the other side, on Fancy Beer's side, it looks like their snipers are more in the form of their Blackjacks and the Shadowhawks. I would probably give the advantage in a brawl scenario to Black Sun then. I think that those Miseries are a very, very powerful tool, and they can be, uh, if they can be used effectively in a brawl, I think that they'll definitely win. But I'm not sure if any team is going to want to push out on the other. It seems interesting. Uh, it does look like Fancy Beer has sustained the most damage so far. I don't know how uh, I don't know how informed Black Suns are. They could just be playing it careful. Uh, we'll see. I, I'm not sure if any team is if either team is going to be willing to make a push in this situation. What I'd like only... to see out of those Jenners for Black Suns, if they still had uh, their strikes left, is a bit of an aggressive push up to Pride Rock. The big rock formation just in front of the comms tower in the center of the map because from there they would be getting good angles and precision placements on those strikes and they'd make them really count and they wouldn't be too far overextended that they would be at risk of dying so yeah, a bit I mean, of aggression with the strikes can go a long way into making them uh, more effective and with six and a half minutes there is still a lot of time left in this game uh, a push takes very very little time uh, um, a minute at most in some cases uh, so this definitely isn't a stagnated game yet you do have the possibility that these teams will end up pushing into each other and this definitely isn't one of like one of the large maps like say Terra Therma or Alpine where if you start a push and the enemy doesn't want to do it they have lots of room to run away on Forest Colony here the only way to run away is to do a smart sort of sidestep and run to your opponent's side of the map 
And we have seen that uh, from a couple teams where they circle the map. But more often, the map is small enough that you will be in range and you will be putting damage down if you're pushing. Yeah, on those on those larger maps, you have a lot more room to maneuver. And honestly, with the style that these teams are playing, they have even less room to maneuver because they're as far back as possible, which means they cannot back up. So the only choice they have to make is that try and that sidestep maneuver, which if you see coming, it's actually very hard to run away in Mech Warrior unless you have a significant, I'd say, uh, like 40 kph advantage. So we may, if one of these teams pushes on the other, it w I think it will turn into a brawl. I don't think we'll see a shifting scenario. But still, no one has gone down. Uh, Lex in that Dragon Slayer is still, uh, still up and kicking at 66%. Uh, no real significant damage. Uh, we've got one player, for, another player from. Well, I look up his team here really quick. Uh, one, we've got a player from Black Suns who's also fairly injured, but only at seventy-seven percent. So, I think most of that damage is actually to his rear from an arty strike, but he's not near death. Yeah. Actually, if, if another strike was put on him, there is the chance that more rear damage opens up his rear right, crits his Gauss, and then the Gauss kills his XL, so... That is possible. The other possibility is, you know, obviously, already headshots are a thing. Uh, we're coming up on the four minute mark at this point, and the Dragon Slayers for Black Sun are remaining in about the same position. The rest of their mechs are still holding uh, the actual, like, radio dish uh, near their spawn. It doesn't look like they're planning a move. I don't see like shifts toward one side. It looks like the lights from Black Sun may or may not be uh, grouping together. They might be going for one of those aggressive picks like you had talked about. Uh, I, they actually I, look like they've been falling back more to the safety of their heavies instead of... Oh really? Oh yeah. Actually, it they're looks grouped like up, though. the Miseries might be moving up the right side. Oh, that could be a push. Black yep. Suns. With three minutes and thirty seconds, but the, that, that's the that would be curious because that's really split. The hope and would be, as we say that, they're just chilling out a bit more. Ah, gotcha. So the hope would be with a, a move like that that you're able to move in your miseries, get a pick, and then retreat back either into the caves or hold your ground long enough that the time runs out with you still up by that one kill because that it, that is still a win. You know, now that I say that, they are kind of proving me wrong. Those Miseries are slowly leapfrogging up cover, escorted by those Jenners. Thing is though, looking back at the rest of their team, they are split. So I'm wondering if the rest of the team is just staying there to provide the illusion that there is no movement happening, and the team doesn't have to be concerned, and those Miseries are just going to be sneaky little buggers and uh, get try and sneak up on one of those Embers, because they are hiding over here um, in the mining colony. And if the Miseries sneak up on those, uh, a couple good Alphas could rip off a leg, get a kill with two minutes left, and from what they've scouted, the rest of the team wouldn't be able to reply in time to pick those Miseries off before they get to safety. So yep, if they pull that off, that that would be a really good play. And, and with as that we say Raven, that, actually, the rest cover. of the team is starting to move out across the middle and put some pressure on. We have two minutes and seven seconds left in the match. And look, I'm watching this with bated breath and see if they can actually get any work done here. I think that uh, it, it's all going to depend on if any of those mechs in Tiny Town have seismic. Because if they don't see this push coming, it is going to hurt and it is going to be surprising. That Raven has ECM, so the likelihood of them being spotted is even smaller. Uh, yeah, it, this this could be a good fight. The Dragon Slayers and the Miseries have moved all the way up to what we call Pride Rock, just at the base of the comms tower. The Firestarters, the Cataphract, the Banshee are still in Mining Town. Uh, Fancy Beer is moving a Jagermech and a Battlemaster up to reinforce that. And the rest so of they... their team is, is kind of nearby, so it appears like they have spotted this. We have minute 20 on the clock. Oh, somebody died. No on. big engagement going down yet, but they have definitely drawn into close enough proximity that somebody could go down very quickly. And that's the goal. We've got a minute and 13 seconds left, and these two teams are fighting very well. We see some messages in chat, actually. Uh, one minute left, don't die. So everybody's being careful. They know what they're trying to do. Uh, but it looks like, I think Black Sun is trying to pressure this. They're trying to get that pick and win with that one kill. 
the Miseries and the Cataphracts are moving up into Mining Town from Pride Rock. The Dragon Slayers are wrapping around the left, trying to keep the reinforcements out of the fight. Artillery strikes and air strikes are going down. There is machine gun oh, fire and laser fire everywhere. Down. Lupo X in the Misery is being focused hard. Green Eye, one of the lights for Black Suns, is down. Fancy Beer is up two right now, I believe. Uh, yep. And when Lupo goes down, that will be three. Lex goes down for Fancy Beer, so this is a very, very close game. Only 22 seconds left. The, they're brawling as hard as they can in this tiny town area, trying to even out these kills. It is actually 3-2 now in favor of... I want to say... In favor of Axons right now, they have killed Archwin, Angel, Lex. Kid, and with those last minute kills, they narrowly edge out that victory. 3 2. That was a close game. Uh, I really liked that we, we had a game sort of like this uh, last night, where both teams just sort of stood and uh, were at a very standoff match the whole time. But uh, tonight we saw them pull out of that situation and <laughs> pull out by pushing in uh, and managed to you know squeak out those three kills and take the victory. So. We see... Uh... Yeah, Black Suns, Black Suns managed to take down Archwing Angel's Banshee, Lex420's Victor DS, the one that was banged up at the beginning, and Lokid's Firestarter. I believe he got just a little caught out on the front lines for that push. And so that was the three kills for Black Suns, and in return they traded away Lupo's Stalker, who was on point for that, and just tanked like six mechs in order to get everybody else on his team the Freedom of Fire and Green Eye, who was probably trying to get in to pick somebody off, and got, well, it, by the looks of it, insta-gibbed. So